Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a tactic stock. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate your support. And we have a new submission from Geo Dan, Geo Dan underscore one, and his KV2 from Clan 13 AD. He's top tier in a two tier battle on Ghost Town. Spawned into the north. Are you proud of me? I actually knew what it was called. I looked at it before I started recording. Two years, I can learn. <laughs> it's going to happen. So, Geo Dan sent me this and said, hey, I had a pretty good game, but we did not win, so what could I have done to win? And that's always a great question. That's the question you should ask every time you lose, so that eventually you become a 100% player, right? <laughs> no, that's probably not happening, but you can improve every time. Geodan's going to come up here, take a quick look at the T-34S, and then back off. If you were going to back off, I might have just popped that shot off. What are you going to lose? Not a whole bunch. It might have hit him. We're going to back up and go to the right. So I think that's the right answer. You're dueling with the 34S who has a more accurate gun is probably not going to go that great. Now, Geodan, you may notice, is, is running a purple KV-2. I'm pretty sure its name is Barney. <laughs> it's got a... It's purple. Geo, what, what is with the purple? Alright, we're going to come up here and we're going to start fighting this KV-85 and his buddy over here. And Geo, first thing he does is he gets all discombobulated with these two guys and sort of pushes out the other guy and then he rams into the KV-1 and shoves the KV-1 out of that spot. I would avoid doing that kind of thing. Try to work with him. What you've done here is you've stopped the KV-1 from having any kind of ability to help you. So try to avoid the hey this is my spot thing and ramming people out of the way. Alright that's my two cents on that. We're gonna hang out a little bit and I think you're in the right spot to play the map right now based on what they have and the tank that you've got. This is a good idea to be right here. Again, I might have taken that shot as well. Just see what happens. Try to get rid of that, but then we wouldn't have this. <laughs> just, just, this is what the KV-2 is all about. A pen into the side of the KV-85 and he one-shots the poor guy. And then we're going to back out. The KV-1's pushing in the T-50-2 is helping. You've got a Wolverine that's near dead and a T-34S. So the question of what could I have done usually revolves around going to the right place at the right time, leveraging the tanks that are around you, your allies, and maintaining both your hit points and theirs if you can. The HC number 6 goes in, and the first thing you do, and I would call this your first big mistake, is you go into this pit, which I cannot for the life of me figure out why why you are in here. And we're going to try to get up and crawl up the wall, maybe get the E2, and then we're kind of spinning around. And we have two big slow tanks flailing around in this pit. And I would absolutely avoid going into that pit because you just wasted a bunch of time. And this is going to go to my main point on this. Now your artillery, or the artillery is firing at you. Right now, your strength is you, the KV-1, the Jackson, the 85, and the HT-6. And what you want to do here is clean up this town as fast as possible so that you can maintain your hit points and your team's hit points. And what you actually do is you wander away from the KV-1 and the HT-6 and go over here to the north. And it may be a case of you saw, well, the north is, is getting pushed, and that's good, you noticed it, but we're going to go up here... We're going to get out view ranged by miles, and now we're going to turn around. So just think of all the time that we've wasted here. Now let's talk a little bit about gunnery. You're going to swing around here, and we're going to point right at this guy with very little lead, and that shot goes way behind him. That shot goes way behind him. One other thing I want you to note, and everyone else to note, he's running about a 190, somewhere around 200, 180 to 190 ping. That is not easy to do in a KV-2, so that's going to cause you some problems. As far as the gunnery goes, re remember that the further away something is, the faster they're moving, and the slower your shell velocity is, the more lead you're going to need. So we're going to come around here, we see the Cromwell, and then we stop sideways. I would not have stopped sideways. I'm curious why he didn't just pick off one more shot. But now he's bumming. He takes a hit, and he's thinking, I cannot get to cover, and here comes this guy, and some auto aim, and zoom, and deleted. So nicely done there. But look what's happened behind you. The guys that you had behind you, the KV-1, some of them are dead. And now the KV-1 is over there fighting alone. And we're really futzing around with some guys that, for now, are kind of on the periphery of the game. 
So the big the big answer to your question, what could I have done? You could have been back here with the KB-1 cleaning out the city so that you preserve as many of these tanks, and a couple of them are dead already. The problem with getting to the edges of the city is exactly what your team is finding out. They own the north and the south, and you just get sniped. So you needed to get in here, clean out these guys as best you could, maybe preserve the KB-1, who was actually a pretty decent player based on two marks on his KB-1. And then you may have had a few more hit points end game. This gets pretty exciting, actually, so we'll watch this as it goes. So now we're messing around on the north. The Panzer 454 is behind the terrain. There's no way you're getting a shot on him. And he's getting beat up. So I think really the Hellcat is the one you want to be looking at, but he's also behind a, a rock up there. You missed an opportunity right there. So here he comes. He's trying to get out. Takes a shot. All right, gunnery once again. He shot right at him. You had the pipper right on him. That was going to require quite a bit of lead fire to have any chance to hit that guy. All right, so he's moving from left to right. That means you put the pipper out in front to the right. And you may know all this. I don't know. I haven't seen any of your replays. And some of it is probably contributed by or attributed to and contributed by the, the ping. So the Hellcat's actually down low. Now that you're spotted, you're actually in danger of taking artillery. And I thought this was an interesting move. Kind of very lucky the Hellcat didn't manage to come up and over and hit you in the side. And look at the poor KB-1. All that time, remember what I talked about? That was about a minute ago, maybe a minute and a half ago, maybe two. But all that time, he fought as well as he could and eventually got whittled down in the middle. Now we're down to two tanks. So what if you had gone over there and helped that guy? High potential there to have him alive and his hit points and his gun. And really, when you get down to the end... <laughs> gotta love that. The hand of Stalin. When you get down to the end of a game like this and you look at it and go, well, it's 1v5. There's the artillery. And unfortunately, you have an LEFH to deal with. And it's a 1v5. It's almost always a case of, at least for me, when I see it, I'm thinking, man, I wish I had a couple extra tanks around. And how could I have had a couple extra tanks around? <laughs> it lights you on fire. You snap him. This is this is good stuff right there. And we're up to 1811. But that's what I'm asking myself. How? What could I have done to have a few more allies around, preserve a few more of their hit points and my hit points, where were those critical mistakes made? And I, I really want to... It really does come down to not supporting your guys in the town, which is where your strength was. So just being a little bit... Uh, I, I'm going to call it wishy-washy. That's not really the word I'm looking for. It's not a case of you're wishy-washy because you're, you're a, a bad person or something. It's just you did a lot of flailing around here and there. Going out to the edge of the map, that kind of thing. Now, at this point you got to deal with these guys. And from this point on, I'm going to call you... Tentative was probably the better word than wishy-washy. You're going to be quite tentative in a couple cases where you needed to make something happen. This actually works out for you because I don't know what this Hellcat is thinking, but he loses his mind here momentarily. Realize you are backing out into the artillery. I'm very surprised they didn't actually shoot. Oh, there we go. They did shoot you. So you just lost 165. See, there's where he loses his mind. I don't, I don't know what that plan was. I guess he was hoping because you were stunned you would actually miss. And now that, that hurt your chances a lot. That was a big hit from the M44. You should have known that you were backing out into the Artie at that point. It actually gets interesting though because the direction the Artie came from was more or less in the direction of their cap. But later on he's going to move quite a bit. And then <laughs> it's, like, it's like a black hole that Barney just has to go to. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's a dinosaur nesting area. I don't know. There's a Skoda in there. They're, it's kind of a dinosaur-looking thing. But we are back into the pit. My assumption is you're trying to defend yourself from the Panzer IV and maybe be tricky, but you're going to have a really hard time shooting anything out of that. And as a matter of fact, he's probably going to have an easier time sniping the top of your turret if he actually did show up than you would of sniping his because he'll be looked down. So we back out. That's a good idea. And now we've got to go find the Panzer IV-H. Those hit points that you lost to the artillery would have helped you a lot against the Panzer IV-H because you'd have been relatively confident that you could, at least if your front armor to him was to him, you could definitely outduel that guy with the dirt. But right now, if he pens, or especially if he comes in from the side or behind, you're in big trouble. So we'll push out this way, and we find the Panzer IV-H, but get proxy lit. And we start leaning over this way. And again, I would not have done that. 
the shot's going to come in. There it is. At first I thought just a regular gun was shooting, but, you know, the LEFH has such a little gun. Look at the little tiny. Isn't that cute? Look at that cute little tiny <laughs> crater the LEF makes. <laughs> and we're going to come back around here. We find the Panzer IV, who waits a little too long to take his shot, and unfortunately, you do not actually pen the guy. We do 328, so a pen would have been nice, but he was angled. That's too bad. And the LEFH makes a mistake because he's shooting heat. He's looking for that kill. So he did not get his kill as you bounce the heat shot. And now the Panzer IV H is doing its thing over there. And time is becoming an issue. we got five minutes. Man, that was a bit dangerous. I don't know. If I was the Panzer IV H, I might have been sitting there just zoomed in waiting for you to come back around the corner because that would have been perfect for him. But he decides to bail out of there. He is a one-shot to you at this point. We've got five kills, 2,300 damage. Nice job. And now we're just sort of searching around. And what you've got to do now is search around as best you can and try to avoid getting out into arty positions where they can shoot you. And that's probably a place where you can be shot by them. I like the thought. Let's go around here and see if we can't surprise him. And now we're moving around this way. There he is. And he just shows up in front of us and goes down. <laughs> so it looks like, what did he, did he bounce? I don't know what happened right there. He may have just plain old missed. I see your damage on him. I see the heat shell. I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there. But that's good. You got out of it without losing any hit points. And now we just got to track down two already. And that's, that is a trick with a KV-2. It is definitely a trick with a KV-2. But they make some critical mistakes that are going to help you. And you make one that's going to hurt you. So I like, it looks like to me that you are attempting to win the game. So I, that I do appreciate. So we're going to head out this way. The most likely position for the artillery is somewhere around their cap. Especially for the LAFH based on the direction he's been shooting you and how fast he is. Unfortunately, an M44, for the amount of time that it's been since he fired at you, he could be anywhere on the map. And then we're, and we're back. Checking on the eggs, I assume. I, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anyone get into this position three times in one game. Okay, so we're there. We have... We have absolutely confirmed there is no artillery in that pit. So that's fantastic. That's good work. And Barney finally comes up and out of the nesting area and trundles along looking for an artillery. And really what you're trying to avoid is getting spotted and then nuked by both of them. If they're bushed up anywhere, they're going to see you miles and miles before you get there. And that's unfortunate. But we're going to come out this way. And this is kind of interesting. We turn this corner. And then we come down here. We're fine for the moment. Come on in here. Heading out into the open. And holy goodness gracious, I'm spotted. So at least three seconds ago. Which makes the possibility somewhere from there over to about there. So that somebody is in that area right there. Right? And this is the mistake I'm talking about. You stop and back up. Oh man, that is just not a good idea. You're very much more, very much more easy. You're much easier to hit. And then watch what happens here. This is okay. There's the LAFH, and boom. And the direction is actually this way. That's good intel. You lost a lot of hit points, and you barely survived. But he's back here somewhere, man. So now you're sandwiched. That LAFH has to be the one that spotted you in this area. The M44 is now back there. You actually backed into the M44. You know, for, for my money, I would have actually, when I first saw this, I would have blitzed in here and hid there and still been hit by the M44. So that is a bit of a surprise. However, you now know where he is, relatively anyway. And you didn't take another hit from the LFH, so that makes me think, you may be dark by now, that makes me think he was actually over in this area somewhere. Probably up on that hill. And then one of them gives you a break. That has to be the M44. That's the direction he hits you from. So we're going to head off that way. And just think about it for a minute. If you had been in the city, helping your... I thought you were going to go back in the cave, in the pit, and I was just going to turn this thing off. <laughs> anyway, if you had been able to preserve a few more hit points there and kept a couple of your guys alive by fighting in the town instead of going around and messing around on the edge, this would be much easier to do with two tanks. 
And I like this. You just have to do this. You got to come around and go find these guys. Thank goodness he wasn't looking down that corridor. He should have been. And he sort of is because he's actually over here to the left slightly. And we'll find him right there. And he sees you. Now he's zooming in. And Oh, man, that is a bit of a bummer. And I could see... Did you see his gun coming your way? And I could think... I could see you thinking, well... If he just snaps one off and gets lucky, he's going to splash me to death. So let me take this shot. But it turns out it would have been fine because he actually hits short and doesn't splash you at all. I would not have come forward like that. Although you may be thinking the LEFH is behind you. And for, for a wonder, he's actually trundled around this way. That's interesting, right? So he's come all the way from this side, all the way back around. There he is. Doesn't have a shot. I like that. You pull back. You're going to out-reload the M44. Not by a whole bunch, but you will. And this is a tricky shot because you have to go through. You have to go through all of that wooden structure because if you hit it, it's going to eat the HE. <laughs> Alright. Now let's talk about... So I've talked about if you preserve some hit points, if you fought in the town a little bit more, helped out your guys that were in there. You may have a few guys to help you, but here you are at this point of the game. How do we win at this point of the game? Well, the LEF is, LEFH is not fast. Your only chance is to not let him get away and look at your 47 seconds. I don't know if I would have done this. I may have just challenged him. And if he was shooting heat, I might get a bounce. Maybe he just misses. I don't know. I'd have gone after him. We back up, and I know you're just trying to avoid getting shot by him as you come around in an obvious charge around the corner. But he is on the run. Which I, if I was him, I would not have run. I would have just sat there and waited for you to do this. And if you didn't show up in those six, seven seconds, then I'd move. But I don't know where he went. He's not very fast, but there's some some buildings and things he can go around. We got 17 seconds. It'd be nice if you found him here, but we didn't. And this makes me think he maybe headed over there to the east or something. I don't know. Maybe he just fell back into one of these bushes. We got five seconds. I was really hoping to see him right here, but that is not where he is. And he just gets away. And that's just one of those timing things. You're, you got to look at the time, look at your reload, look at how fast his tank is, and go. You know what? I'm just going to have to charge after him. I'm not very fast either. If I'm going to win this thing, it might might be a lucky snap, or maybe he misses or something. But not a bad game, man. Seven kills, two thousand seven hundred eight damage. You did it in a purple Barney looking tank. So there you go. <laughs> I really, I've beat this dead horse, so let's just beat it one more time. It, it has everything to do with your early to mid game, not supporting the guys in the town. As far as I'm concerned, to preserve some of your team's hit points, knock out some of their tanks as a team in there, and then start working the dudes on the edge. That's what you have to do in the town on this map. If you're heavy in the town, you got to clear out the guys in the town, and then you got to try to figure out how to get all the clowns that are around the edges without getting massacred moving out into the open. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate that. I hope that helped you there. Geo Dan, thanks for sending that in. And as always, we will see you.